This reading is from Le Petit Prince of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. For millions of years, flowers have been producing thorns. For millions of years, sheep have been eating them all the same. And it's not serious trying to understand why flowers go to such trouble to produce thorns that are good for nothing? It's not important, the war between the sheep and the flowers? Suppose I happen to know a unique flower, one that exists nowhere in the world except on my planet one that a little sheep can wipe out in a single bite one morning, just like that, without even realizing what he's doing. That isn't important. If someone loves a flower of which just one example exists among all the millions and millions of stars. That's enough to make him happy when he looks at the stars. He tells himself, my flower is up there somewhere. <coughs> but if the sheep eats the flower, then for him, it's as if suddenly all the stars went out. And that isn't important. And from his book, Farthest North, the Danish explorer, Dr. Fridjof Nansen, in 1897 wrote, this is the second Christmas spent far away in the solitude of night, in the realm of death, farther north and deeper into the midst of it than anyone has been before. Through the gloom, we could see faintly only the black cliffs and the rocky edges and the great stones on the beach, which the wind always sweeps clean. Above us, the sky, clear and brilliant with stars, sheds its peace over the earth. Far in the west falls shower after shower of stars, some faint, scarcely, scarcely visible, others bright like Roman candles, all with a message from distant worlds. Low in the south lies a bank of clouds, now and again outlined by the gleam of the northern lights, but over the sea, the sky is dark. <coughs> there is open water there. It is quite pleasant to look at it. Next summer, it will carry us home. Presently, the aurora borealis shakes over the vault of heaven, its veil of glittering silver, changing now to yellow, now to green, now to red. It spreads, it contracts again in restless change. And all this time, this utter stillness, impressive as the symphony of infinitude. I have never been able to grasp the fact that this earth will someday be spent and desolate and empty. To what end, in that case, all this beauty with not a creature to rejoice in it? Now I begin to divine it. This is the coming earth. Here are beauty and death. But to what purpose? Ah, what is the purpose of all these spheres. 
Read the answer if you can in the starry blue firmament. 